Good morning, this is Chris Shoemaker, also known as Yehuda Ben Shomer, and you're listening to Coffee with Chris, the time of the day where we share a cup of coffee and share a bit of the Word of God. This is our 6th and 7th Sidra, 6th and 7th Aliyah, the Friday-Saturday portion of Shoftim, which means Judges. And today we are in Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 14, and going all the way to chapter 21, verse 9, but we're going to just hang out in that middle chapter of chapter 20. So this is uh, basically the rules of engagement when Israel goes to war with somebody other than the Canaanite nations because the Canaanite nations were this pollution of the fallen angelic realm and they created these Nephilim giants and it polluted the human DNA. It was outside of God's creation. So therefore God said, wipe them all out, men, women, children, everything. But when you go and if you have a conflict with another nation that's not Canaanite, that have not been polluted by the Nephilim, um, you're to treat them totally differently. And these are the rules of engagement uh, for uh, for this. So in Deuteronomy chapter 20, verses 10 through 12, it says, when you go near a city to fight against it. Now, war is always kind of a last result, last resort. But even if you have to resort to war, it says, call out shalom, call out peace to it. In other words, try to, to resolve this in a peaceful way. Try not to go to war. When you go near a city to fight against it, call out shalom to it. Now, if it answers you, Shalom, if it agrees to peace and opens up to you, then all the people found in it will serve you as forced laborers. If it does not make peace with you, but makes war against you, lay siege against, uh, uh, against the city. All right. So it's always we offer the olive branch and, and come to a peaceful resolution if, if at all possible. Now, let's go back. Uh, let's go down to verses 19 and 20. This is talking about if you have to resort to war and if you have to lay a siege. It says, when you lay a siege to a city for a long time, making war against it to capture it, you are not to destroy its trees by swinging an axe at them. Uh, for from them you may eat. So you, uh, so you shall not chop them down. For is the tree of the field human, so that you should enter the siege before you? You may destroy and chop down only trees that you know are not trees for food. Who's, who said that uh, Christians and Jews are not environmentally conscious? Who said that the God of Israel is not environmentally conscious? That's kind of the big buzz thing, right? You know, let's save the trees. Well, God was all about saving the trees. He's like, you have to use trees to build, to make things, to create things, but only trees that don't produce food. If it produces food, leave them alone. Let them grow. You need that food. So this was kind of an environmental conservation that came directly down from God. So it says, you may destroy and chop down only the trees in order to build siege ramps and siege works, right? You may destroy and chop down only the trees that you know are trees uh, not for food, so that you may build siege equipment against the city that is making war against you until it is until its downfall. So it says, uh, it's it's like, look, are these fruit or what did these fruit trees do to you? You need these fruit trees. Don't chop them down. So that's kind of a message to us. Uh, and we can apply it to our daily lives that, uh, yeah, we should take care of the environment uh, that 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 God has given us to live in. Actually, that was the very first job of Adam. Was he not to tend and keep the garden? He was to to be environmentally conscious, not allow anything into the garden that would cause chaos or harm or do anything that would cause harm. He was to tend it, to prune it, to take care of it to manage it it doesn't get over wild and overgrown and it doesn't get neglected to where it withers it's just this bright balance of taking care of things and uh, that's what we need to do uh, with what god has given us um, and so it is a great misnomer among the uh, peoples of the world the secular world that that claims that christendom and judaism are not environment are not environmentally friendly that's we just don't go to the extremes that they go to uh, they go to such a Dreams that, that they they almost worship, uh, and some of them do. Some of them call the earth Gaia and worship her. We don't go that far because we know that the world is a created thing, and it was created for who? It was created for us human beings. He put us on it, and it was for our benefit. So we were to use these things to our benefit without abusing or exploiting what God has given us. It is environmentally consciousness, but in a very balanced way. And hopefully you've been able to see that through these verses. Guys, thanks so much for listening. Go out there and have a great day. Shalom and God bless.